You got a package. Oh, cool. What's in it? It's a Bellatron. What's a Bellatron? I think it's a kind of Swiss cookie. Yum. Mail time. Now last week, Otto contacted me. Because he'd got bycatch in something that he'd bought and said he can't use it. And would I like to try it? Oh, yum. Bastler Lekkerli. Ever since medieval days, they've been cooking gingerbread, a Lebkuchen, in Basel. And from that was developed the Bastler Lekkerli, a specialty of Basel. And it's still manufactured by the same secret recipe. Thanks very much, Otto. Yum. Cute box. Now you might be asking, what's a Ballantron? And all I can say is, I had exactly the same question because I'd never heard of it before. Looks like that whole box might clean up quite nicely. Right, so what's actually in here? All right. Nice one, Otto. Like. Where are my cookies? Ah, they're packaged wrong. The Bellatrons are in a box called Basler Lickily. That doesn't matter. Don't snatch. Oh, they look good. Mm, they do. Right, this is obviously the power cable. And unfortunately, this is not what we use here. Austria uses these ones, which I think are called Schuko, and this is a Swiss standard of some description, so I'll have to go to the hardware store tomorrow and get a replacement. The other components are the accelerometer, which has got a magnetic base, and this thing, which they call the actuator, which I guess vibrates and bashes material off the grinding disc. Now I don't really want to try this out the first time on my nice new grinding wheel. So I think I'll use this scungy old one which is pretty random and probably from a bench grinder or something. But to switch them, I need my puller tools. And this is where all of you Gridfinity enthusiasts out there can laugh at me. Where have I put them? Got the fork tool for undoing the nut and the puller I made for pulling them off. And I put them out of the way the other day. And now I can't bloody find them. Right, well, while I'm thinking about where the hell I put those in safekeeping, this is my dust extractor. And I think this surface here would be a perfect place for tool setup. So I'll just make a bit of a wooden inlay for it to sit on. And that's going to need to be 11 and a half inches by 4, 6, 7 millimeters. Now while we're playing with the surface grinder, it was also pointed out to me that a good way of cutting down the amount of fine dust in the air is to put up a board with some magnets. So I got a bunch of hard drive magnets. I chopped up some old hard drives that were given to me by Christian here in Vienna because I like these frames as a casting alloy. So I think what I'll do is just mount all them onto a board. Right, this whole thing's going to live in a plastic bag just to stop the, the metal dust from sticking to the magnets. Right, it's going to be a good place to put the tools once I find them. Since I have no idea how effective this is going to be, I think I'll temporarily mount it to the wall with duct tape, just sort of behind here where the big filter box exhausts. Now, despite searching, I still haven't found those tools, so I'll get on with another job, and that's smoking chipotles. We also have one very nice looking ancho here. Right, last week, I cut up some cherry wood to make sawdust 
And I must say, this wood cut with my saw and not with the planer or anything else is just the perfect sawdust for this. On the first batch of chilies I did, it ignited easily, burnt for ages, like easily 12 hours. It's just perfect. So that's great. I smoked the jalapenos for two days and in those two days I searched high and low for those tools of mine and still couldn't find them. And this year's apples are also coming to the end so I'll just pick the last few of them and I think I'll make an apple pie. Now this apple tree could definitely do with some pruning. This was the first year it's given like lots and lots of apples whereas most years it's been pretty useless. I should probably still try and work out how to prune it so that it doesn't look like it's falling over the whole time. Now I'm going to assume that my lovely wife has got some big jar of cinnamon in here somewhere. Or maybe a big bag of it or something from Asian store. Because we tend to go through a fair bit of it. But I have absolutely no idea what I'm looking for. And now I'm going to get in trouble for messing everything up. What have we got here? Almonds, or coriander powder. Garam masala. What's this one? Tandoori masala. Not judging by my waistline, the food around here is pretty good. Right, what about the straw? Aha, cinnamon. That's us. I think I lost a few viewers by doing a couple of more commercial videos with the on shape and things like that. So I guess I'll try and gain a few by making a cooking channel. Right, I'll cook it at about 360 degrees Fahrenheit for about 40 minutes. All right. Mail time. This has come in from Christian, one of the very generous supporters of this channel. Far out. These are the paint strainer bits for making sure your paint's not got any blobs in it. Looks like some sort of a funnel or funnel cap. Oh nice, some um, two component clear coat from MIPA, part of a paint gun. This looks like cleaner for cleaning out a paint gun. And what do you know, a SATA, very very nice paint gun. Wow, that is excellent. Uh, that's very nice, Christian. Thanks a lot. So Christian was obviously down sick last week. I hope you're feeling better today, mate. Oh, wow. I think it's interesting that even people who watch my channel and know what I do to cutting tools still send me cutting tools. They must really not like them that much. Well, Christian, thanks very much for all that. It's much appreciated. I'm not sure which machine gets is going to get painted next. I'm guessing it'll probably be the fourth axis from Nikon, but time will tell. Watch the space. Right, it's the next day. I went to the hardware store and got a correct plug. Alright, let's see if this works. Oh, okay. Car goes on. Let's go connect this thing up. Right, well I've turned my workshop upside down looking for those puller and removal tools for the surface grinder and I can't find them anywhere. I sure hope I didn't 
put them in a box or something and then they got thrown out with some other boxes, but they're kind of heavy. I, th I think I would have noticed that. Anyway, I'll keep looking. I even got annoyed enough to get out the big hammer and break up some cast iron I was given. Since my tools are still AWOL, I guess I'm not going to be changing out onto a different wheel. I'll be balancing this one. As a baseline, this wheel has been mounted and dressed, but it has not had any balancing done on it. First, I'll just start the spindle and let it run for about 15 minutes to warm up the bearings a bit. Right, I'll just do a before and after grind. And so this here is going to be my test piece, as always. I'll just adjust those table stops in a bit. Give it a bit more over travel in this direction. I haven't dressed the wheel for a while, so let me just give it another quick dressing. Okay, there you can see the surface finish. It's not terrible, there's a bit of reflection in there, but you can also see there's a little bit of vibration in there. Let's try balantroning it and see if that does anything. So per the instructions, first up we need to cable everything up of course. Oh look, when I open the garage door to give me better ventilation while grinding, I had thrown the new coolant tank outside just to make some space. And there are my tools, hooray! So the accelerometer pickup gets connected with this coax cable. Okay, turn that on. It does a couple of freakouts, which I assume is its uh, self-test. So the next step, number two, the accelerometer gets set for about 20% higher RPM than the machine has. So 20% gives us up around 3,600 RPM. So wind that up to 3,500, let's call that 600. So now we put the accelerometer either on the spindle or on the table as per figure one. So figure one, if we have it on top, you want it pointing out to the side. As there are magnets on two surfaces of the accelerometer block, it looks like it wants you to do a vibe survey in one orientation, then flip it to the other and see which one gives you the highest vibrations. Okay, so when we turn on the spindle, if the vibrations are less than two and a half microns, we push the two and a half micron button. So then we slowly lower the RPM range of the accelerometer back towards the 3000 RPM of the spindle, looking for a maximum vibration. And if the indication goes full deflection, then go back out of the 2.5 micron setting. Whoops, I've got the wrong RPM range here. So at the moment I've got vibrations between 7 and 10 microns, so I don't need to hit the high sensitivity. And now I can start dialing back on the adjustment. Right, so it looks like I'm below 3000 now. Okay, that seems to be the highest vibration I'm seeing at about six units. And that vibration's occurring pretty close to the 3000 RPM. So with six microns of vibration in the first orientation, we flip the accelerometer over to the second position and see whether it gives higher or lower vibrations. Okay, much higher vibrations in this direction. So we leave it in that high vibration orientation. So this is the point where we're supposed to choose the RPM range. I've already done that, we're at 3000. We turn on the actuator and hold it against an unused portion of the wheel. And because the highest vibration is occurring in position two, if I understand it correctly, I should be putting the actuator at the bottom of the wheel. Hmm.
I don't feel anything from the actuator. It's not vibrating at all. I wonder if it's defective. I assume this should vibrate. So that's cut a very even groove right around the whole diameter. And that's not what it's supposed to do. The whole idea is that this thing oscillates and only takes off metal at the high spot. So I think this is damaged or not working. Bugger. Now there is a fuse on the back of this, so let's just take a quick look at that. Okay, well I checked the fuse with a multimeter. It's fine. I wonder what this is. Feels like some sort of a circuit breaker or something, but it doesn't feel like it's popped. Plug that back in again and give it one more go. Okay, let's try that actuator again. No, nothing. Hmm. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find a user manual or user guide for it on the internet. So if anybody's got access to one, I'd love a copy, please. Yeah, that's a bit of a shame that that actuator's not working. I mean, the, the vibration sensing still does, so I can still use it to measure the imbalance on grinding wheels. I'll have to set up and actually conventionally balance all of my grinding wheels first, and then I can measure them and get a feel for what sort of range they should be in and what sort of surface finish I get based on different vibration levels. But yeah, very cool tool. And hopefully someone's got a some sort of manual or something for it and we can work out how to get this thing working properly. Thanks a lot for watching.